Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy. Zoos has released their Z-Box Hub, and today we are going to find out what it's all about. They sent this to me for free, but I ain't getting paid. For those that are new to the topic, the Z-Box is a Z-Wave hub that acts as a central brain of the smart home. And for those of you that are not familiar with Zoos, I have done a number of videos on their products, and I find them to be innovative, reliable, and affordable. And those links below, those are affiliate links, and I do make some beer money if you have purchased any of those products. Zoos has been talking about the Z-Box Hub for quite a while, and I am pretty happy to finally get my hands on one. While the following information is typically on a need-to-know basis only, I'm going to read you in. The Z-Box Hub is the love child of Fabaro and Zoos, and it's a Z-Wave only hub meaning there is no Zigbee radio inside. This is a bold move for zoos as it firmly plants their flag on the Z-Wave planet. To my knowledge, if you want Zigbee, Thread, or Matter, that's gonna have to take place between either a built-in app or the API. While protocols like Z-Wave do promote open standards, the idea that zoos would want to have their own product that could create their own experience is an idea I can get behind. Further to that point, in conversations I've had with zoos, they've indicated that they do not want this to be thought of as a zoos-only hub. That it's very important to them that this is compatible with other Z-Wave manufacturers' products. A claim which I fully intend to put to the test. Access to the hub is granted through Wi-Fi and direct ethernet is an option with a special adapter. According to zoos, you can set this up either from the desktop app or from the mobile app. With some hubs, you can only do that from one or the other. As I was diving into this hub, I obviously had on my how does this thing perform hat, but there are some other things that I'm curious about as well. First up is what do I do with my non-Hue Zigbee bulbs? How well are the non-Zoos brand supported? And can this hub be the holy grail of entry-level consumer-friendly smart home tech that I've been dreaming of my entire smart home life? It's time to get this bad boy out of the box. The first thing that jumped out at me is that the box isn't all zoozed up. <laughs> yeah, I said zoozed up. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? For example, it's missing the iconic Zoos Green found on almost every other product, and even the ZBoxHub.com website isn't Zoos branded. In fact, you wouldn't know this was a Zoos thing unless you actually watched this video. I mean, th their video, not this video. Let me know in the comments if you think that Zoos should have more heavily branded the ZBox Hub to reflect their own brand. Does it make you more or less likely to buy it? Inside the box, you're greeted with three QR codes, one for setup, one for a tour, and one for support. <laughs> Let's hope we don't need that one. The hub itself is light as a feather. The front of the hub sports the ZBox logo, proudly displaying that it's powered by Fibaro. The back has the power supply port and two buttons. Now it's time to get this thing installed. When it came to the setup, it was pretty straightforward. I will say it was not the easiest that I have encountered, but it certainly was not the hardest that I've encountered. Here's a couple of things that you're gonna wanna look out for. The QR code in my box for the first setup took me to the regular Zoo support website. I had to poke around a bit to get to the real installation instructions. There's a link in the description to the actual setup page. In general, when it comes to setting up hubs and the Z-Box is no different, you're gonna to wanna to give this thing a dedicated IP address from your router. The UI itself is nice, it feels modern. I will say that overall, I'm not a fan of the ever so slightly contrasted font that's all the rage on the websites today. It just makes it difficult to see the text on the background. On the plus side, there is a dark theme which reduces that problem. To get a feel for the software, we are going to compare the desktop app to the mobile app. First up in the mobile app is the favorites page, providing quick access into the alarm status, weather, and overall energy consumption. Scrolling down, you have direct access to scenes, devices, rooms, and all other categories of things. The Z-Box does give you the ability to control what's displayed on the favorites page using the hamburger menu to turn the sections on and off or simply rearrange them. On the desktop, the home page is a dashboard, which is also available in the app. Here devices are grouped by rooms, which are in turn grouped by sections. You can drag and drop these on the dashboard to arrange the order or to move between sections. Rooms and sections are managed from the settings area on the desktop app. In all cases, devices can be controlled from the dashboard as one would expect. When it comes to logging, I only see this available in the desktop, but I confess I didn't really look that hard in the mobile app. The logs are straightforward and informative and can be filtered in a variety of ways. To get a fuller grasp of what this thing is capable of, let's dive into the settings. First up are devices. Frankly, I'm blown away by everything that is exposed about the device. There are basic settings, advanced settings, device configuration, associations, notifications, parameters, and preview tabs. We're not gonna go into them all, but let's check a few of these out. On the general tab, you'll see the role, which is selectable for certain types of devices. 
My Zoos plug, yes. My Quick Set lock, no. The category is also selectable and you can add an additional description or notes. <laughs> notes is actually a very useful feature. I've often wished for this in more places in other hubs. You can also pick your device icon or add your own. Advanced features and device configuration will vary by device, so let's skip that for now. Another thing that impressed me was the ability to control Z-Wave associations directly from the device settings page. This is an advanced feature that will require some learning on the user's part. The notifications are also pretty powerful. From what I can see, you can set up notifications for basically any event that would be sent from any device. I haven't tested that thoroughly, but I would think it's mostly any anyway. For example, this Zoo's Zen 25 double plug has three events while this Quickset 620 has a bajillion. You can also set the notification channel, which includes push notifications, emails, and in-app notification. Push notifications send a message to your mobile device through the mobile app, emails are self-explanatory, and notifications send a message to the app that can be found in the message center. Rooms are pretty straightforward as well. Add rooms as you see fit. Add devices to rooms when you're setting up. Scenes on the Z-Box are understated by name on this hub. You might recognize these as automations, rules, or robots in other hub terminology. Scenes rely on a trigger, which can be single devices or groups of devices, and triggering rules can be chained together. So far, so good. Scenes allow you to add delays, which is another very useful feature. Both triggers and controls can be set to interact with users, weather, time, devices, and other scenes. One thing I couldn't easily figure out how to do was if-then-else scenarios within the scene builder. Granted, I did all of this on my own without reaching out to any message boards or zoo support. I really wanted to see what the experience would be like for a novice user just coming to the end of this blind. Two options I found were either A, chaining rules together, using them as triggers, or B, writing custom Lua code. But let's face it, advanced logic in a smart home hub is in and of itself a very complicated topic, and it is a complicated problem to solve. And by this I'm trying to say no disrespect to the Lua direction, it is a little more complex than no code approaches, but it's not an idea again that I hate if you have the DIY skills to do it. Next up is profiles. These are like modes in other hubs, so good on Zbox for this capability. There's also a dedicated alarm capability built in. Rather than using a traditional alarm panel, authorized users can disarm from the app or using a dedicated tablet. They've actually built in the keypad feature, which is pretty cool. Without going absolutely crazy, I did bring in quite a few devices. We'll go over a couple of them here. My big question was, what do non-Zoos products look like in the Z-Box Hub? I brought in this Minuston button controller. It synced in just fine, but check this out. Remember that advanced tab? Forget scene control. The Z-Box realized it's a button controller and automatically stubbed out the button actions. I admit that this is a rudimentary control, but for the novice, this is a very cool feature. Parameters also expose the LED colors for each button push. In other hubs for this device, it required a custom device driver. <laughs> very nice. Next up, let's go crazy. An Innovelli Red Series Switch. Yeah, I went there. Sorry. I mean, I'm confident that the Zoo stuff is going to work just fine in their own hub, which makes me curious about how the Innovelli will fare. In every hub I've tested, these require the official Innovelli driver to take full advantage of the capabilities. What say you, Z-Box Hub? Once I got the device in, it shows up actually as two devices. One is the remote switch, and the other is the dimmer. And just like the button controller, it has prefabbed actions for the buttons. <laughs> Pretty cool. Watching the logs, you can see the hub responding to the multi-taps, dimming, and on-off events. But as far as the parameters are concerned, you get nothing. I'm not going to blame this on the Z-Box hub. Even on other hubs, you're going to need the Innovelli official driver to get access to that 50 plus parameters that they have. If you were to have a device driver of the Z-Box ilk, you could upload it here, which is also commendable. The Z-Box hub is a solid Z-Wave hub, but let's make no mistake, it is a Z-Wave only hub and you are going to need to rely on other integrations to bring in Zigbee and other capabilities. If you have non-hue Zigbee bulbs, you're going to have to find some other kind of a Zigbee hub to control those and integrate that into your Z-Box if you want a cohesive rule engine. And the thing that actually surprised me the most was just how well this did integrate with non-Zoos products. I thought it did a really good job and surprised me in all that it could detect about other Z-Wave products. The ability to read the device capabilities and parameters was off the charts. For a lot of devices that I've tested that struggled in other hubs, the Z-Box just dealt with it, and it dealt with it just fine. Kind of made me wonder why it was so difficult for other hubs. <coughs> Excuse me. 
On the usability side, I liked the basic capabilities. For the novice, there was enough simple stuff to get my feet wet and do some cool things. The drawback is that the Z-Box seems to go from simple to complicated very quickly. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the mid-level playground that I was really hoping for. Don't get me wrong, there is plenty to do on the easy side and advanced capabilities are available as well. If you're looking for a straight up Z-Wave hub, this is a very affordable option. Zoos and Fabaro are trusted names in the Z-Wave community and this is sure to be a solid product. And with that, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click like and spank that bell icon if it pleases you. I know it gets a kick out of it. And over here are a couple of other videos that my AI robot assistant made just for you. Don't mind the deep fakes. Until next time, cheers.